Hey, welcome to day four of 21 Days of Prayer. My name is Stephen. I'm the Next Steps Pastor at the River Church. And this week we're focused on confession and renewal. And today's scripture passage is going to come from Colossians chapter 1, verses 9 through 14. Let's read it together. Paul writes, For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of His will through all the wisdom and the understanding that the Spirit gives, so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please Him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, and being strengthened with all power according to His glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience, and give joyful thanks to the Father who qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves and whom we have redemption and the forgiveness of sins. Paul is writing to the people uh, at the church of Colossia who like most early churches were under attack from all sorts of different fronts. And this prayer for the Colossians contrasts a lot of the prayers that we hear and that we pray today. See, Paul doesn't pray for deliverance from their problems or their difficulties, but rather that the church would gain spiritual insight and that they would be strengthened with God's power so that they would live a life worthy of the Lord. And it is the deepest desire of my heart to live a life worthy of the Lord. And I would assume that is true for most of you who are joining us for 21 Days of Prayer. But the question is, how do we know we're living a life worthy of the Lord? And so Paul gives us four characteristics in his prayer, just to test ourselves and to see. The first one is bearing fruit. The New Testament often uses this imagery of bearing fruit uh, as a sign of health and growth. And Jesus in John chapter 15 says that those who remain in him and he in them will produce much fruit. And apart from Jesus, we can do nothing But when we produce fruit, we know we're his true disciples, and that pleases God. So if our lives are bearing no kingdom fruit for our king, then we must repent of how we may have veered away from his will for us, and we need to ask Jesus to redirect our path. The second way is that we're growing in the knowledge of God. And the only way we're ever going to be people who are fully pleasing to God is to give ourselves completely to knowing him. And the primary way we grow in our knowledge of God is through the study of His Word. But growing in the knowledge of God is more than just possessing biblical facts or knowledge. See, the knowledge in our heads must change our hearts. And our transformed hearts must move our hands so that we can bear kingdom fruit. Thirdly, we are to be strengthened by God for endurance and a life of patience. A life pleasing to God cannot be lived on our own strength. The strength must be supplied from God. And to have great endurance and patience means that we're not taken by surprise when hard things happen in life and when life hurts. Our God is sovereign and that sovereignty over us does not exempt us from pain. See, we know, we know that Our lives will not go as planned, but they will always go as God plans them to unfold. And finally, the fourth thing is that we give joyful thanks to the Father for our salvation. Genuine heartfelt joy for Christ and a thankfulness to God the Father are a barometer for our soul's health. Our human nature exposes us to the possibility that we can become indifferent towards God or take Christ's work on the cross for granted. Pastor Timothy Keller says that if you are indifferent towards somebody, their happiness is at the expense of your happiness. But if you are in love with somebody, their happiness is your happiness. Indifference towards God leads us to heartless compliance just out of obligation. However, an admiration for God and a heart of joyful thanks leads us to generous actions with the goal of sharing joy with our Heavenly Father. So which of these four things do we need today? We need to ask God for them because we can't do this on our own strength. As a parent, I want my children to become completely independent of me one day. 
But as children of God, our goal is to become completely dependent on Him, recognizing that we can do nothing in our own strength, and that when we come to Him, and we confess our weaknesses to Him, and we recognize our need for Him, God can accomplish great things through us, and that we can live a life worthy of Him. So today, let's pray that God will reveal to us where we need His power to accomplish a life worthy of Him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for who you are, for the work of Christ. And today, God, we pray that we would examine ourselves and that your Holy Spirit would speak to us and tell us specifically where we need to confess our weakness for you so that we can have a renewed strength in you. God, whether it's bearing kingdom fruit or whether it's God growing in the knowledge of you or having endurance and patience or maybe just having a thankful heart. God, would you reveal that to us? May we confess it to you. And God, we know that you are faithful to do a work in us. And God, I pray that the lives that we live would be worthy of you and that it would draw others into a relationship with you. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen.